Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this beautiful Lord's Day here at Line Lexington Mennonite Church. Let's all stand and lift our voices to the Lord in song this morning.
lead. <laughs> We're going to ask you to lead and sing Christmas song. So uh, it's your Christmas Travis. Uh, is this your first one? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So enjoy your first Christmas practice. Here in Austin, that's awesome. Have a good time. Okay. This, is the, this is the passage about do everything without grumbling. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Yeah, okay, there we go. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, I'm, I, I am so delighted to be back with you. You've grown kind of uh, a fond in my heart and mind as we've prayed for you and we look forward to how God's going to provide a, a pastor for you, and that's a very exciting uh, time for you as a church. I drove by uh, and saw the fall festival in progress last week. Great crowd. And Biker Week, uh, had to have traffic control out here, so much going on. That was exciting as well. Uh, in the front row is my uh, daughter. Or no, she's my wife, actually. She just <laughs> looks like my daughter. It's my wife, Elizabeth, and uh, we've been partnering together in ministry for 43 years, and uh, it's been uh, a great delight. Wouldn't want to do it without her, so we're glad she's able to be here today. Well, uh, and now, a number of years ago, it probably is coming up to 20 years ago, I was at an orientation uh, at the seminary for new students that were coming in. And uh, this was a group of Master of Divinity students. So they're pretty serious uh, at this point. And uh, I remember one of the guys that walked in. <clears throat> and remember, 20 years ago, this would have been a little more shocking than it would be today. But he came in. And he had his denim, and the knees were cut out, uh, and uh, he had some patches on his thing, long hair, uh, tattoos that were visible uh, everywhere, right? Uh, on his face, his neck, his hands, and I assume elsewhere all over his body. And he had these plugs in his ears that made his earlobes uh, real low. And I remember thinking that song that we used to sing to the kids, Do Your Ears Hang Low? Um, and, and I'm thinking, well, he looks very different uh, than the other students with their ties and, you know, very prim and proper. And so uh, during the, the introduction time, we're just milling around having some hors d'oeuvres, and I, I said to him, uh, what is it that you want to do after seminary? And he said, I want to be a rock star. Uh, in fact, play that little video. This is the image that came to my mind when he said that. He's a seminary student, and he's going to be a rock star. <laughs> well, looks like a seminary student, doesn't he? Wouldn't you like him to be your pastor? I mean, look at him go. I mean... So, in my mind, that's what he wanted to be. That's what he said. I want to be a rock star. Okay, you can cut that. 
And he said, well, I'll tell you, Professor, he said, uh, for most of my life, uh, I've been highly influenced by the world. And I'm thinking to myself in my judgmental way, right? I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that's an understatement. Uh, that's like the Pope saying he doesn't date much. Um, and, you know, I, I thought, well, he wants to be a rock star. And, I, you know, in my mind, a, a rock star, whoops, let me back up here a bit. Sorry about that. In my mind, a rock star is like this. And he went on to say, I love being in the light. So at that point, I should have known I was being set up. And uh, he was saying, uh, yeah, I want to be a rock star. I, I once was in darkness. Now I'm in the light. I, I used to have uh, the world's grip on me. Now I love this world. And he's like confusing me, right? And I'm thinking this guy is either way out of place or he's a genius. Well, it turned out he was a genius. He went on to say, um, yeah, I decided to come to seminary because of math. And I'm thinking, wow, rock star math? I said, what, what math is that? He said, one cross, three nails equals forgiven. And my life has been radically changed by Jesus. And he went on to tell me his story about how three years prior, God got a hold of him when he was on the big stage with all the light. Uh, somebody in his road uh, crew had been witnessing to him, telling him about the Lord. And so... I said, well, that's interesting. So why do you keep saying you want to be a rock star? He goes, well, it makes perfect sense when you think about it. And I'm going, okay, I can hardly wait. So here was his logic. See if you follow it. Um, he said, I want to be a rock star. And he said, there's a logical sequence to this. And the first one is, stars shine from within. Now, the moon gets its illumination from a reflection of the sun. But a star has its own ability to cast light. The light is within. And uh, he said, stars are used to guide people. And sure enough, uh, you think of the story of Christmas. The kids are down there singing Christmas songs. And no doubt, they'll be uh, conjuring up uh, images of the Magi following the star that God had placed there. So stars guide people and stars shine from within. And Jesus is the rock of my life. He went on then to, to quote Psalm 40, uh, where you know he was in this pit and yet God raised him up and put him on the firm rock. And Jesus refers to himself as a rock. So he said, Jesus is now the rock of my life. And then he said, I want to guide people to Jesus, the rock. Oh, now I'm getting it, right? Therefore, I want to be a rock star. I want to be a star that shines from within, and I want to shine on the rock. And I'm thinking, boy, I can hardly wait to read your papers. <laughs> um, and, you know, he really had a well-defined purpose in life, a life of contrast for him. And there's something really powerful about a testimony like that. But there's also something really powerful about somebody who's raised within a, a Christian home or under the influence of a godly mother or father or aunts or uncles or grandparents and they are taught by example and by word being in churches like this one how important it is to know and love Jesus. The passage that we read earlier uh, talks about that very light that shines as stars in the universe. And so if we could just camp on that for a minute in Philippians 2, you might remember the phrase, in which you shine like stars. Not shine like a moon, shine like a star in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Now remember, the universe is dark uh, and that light shines out, right? And if it weren't dark, 
The stars are there during the daylight. If you go out and try and find them right now, you would have a hard time seeing them, right? But at night, in the contrast. And so likewise, uh, this passage is reminding us that we shine in a dark world, a crooked and perverse world. And it seems to be getting darker and darker, which means we ought to be shining brighter and brighter. Is that tracking with you okay? So I wonder if you want to be a rock star as well. Now, um, the sun, uh, that's the name of our star, by the way, sun, right? Uh, the next closest star is Proxima Centauri and then Alpha Centauri, but we're just called sun or as the Greeks called it, sol, S-O-L, like in solar power. And that came from the, the Greek mythology of, of uh, uh, Helioflex, the, the, the god of sun. And uh, so when we talk about our sun, we're really talking about a star that would mean none of us could survive if it wasn't doing its job and doing it well, right? So in the fact that we're to shine like a star, we should be as our star dispelling darkness. People ought to see those good works that we do and glorify our Father in heaven. So as you, now it gets a little personal by Paul, right? Paul's not just saying, I'm a rock star as the Apostle Paul. He's saying, I want you, I want you to shine. In a dark world. I want you to illuminate. I want you to dispel the darkness. I want you to cast light on the rock, Jesus Christ. And so as you uh, remember that verse, also remember Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, uh, which is in heaven. Tomorrow I get a rare privilege. I'm giving an award. Now, this person doesn't know this, so please don't say anything. Um, I'm giving an award at a gathering of people for somebody that was caught doing a random act of kindness where their light was shining on a person in desperate need. And uh, the story is, and again, confidential. I don't want to spoil it for the person. This woman had just sold her house. Her husband had died. And she was moving into a new place. Um, she had just left her old house on the way to the new. And she had a satchel. And in that satchel was all the earthly things of great value. She had taken money from the bank because she's moving down to this area. So she had all the money she had all of her jewelry and precious things she didn't want the movers to be handling. And she was on a park bench. <laughs> and uh, her son came to pick her up to take her to the new house. And she was waiting for him, got in the car, they got to the new house, no purse, no, no satchel. They rushed back to the park bench. And uh, on the park bench was nothing. It was empty. Person is gone. So she instantly, uh, instinctively prayed to Saint Anthony, the saint of lost things. And if that's your tradition, I guess that's what you would do, right? You'd, you'd pray. And as soon as she said amen and it crossed herself, uh, the phone rang and somebody said, uh, Is this so and so? Yes, it is. I have your purse. And she said, Oh, thank God. Uh, where are you? I, I, I'll come and get it. He said, I'm at the house, but the house looks empty. She said, I just left there. I just moved from there. Well, where are you? I'm at this park bench uh, along the road, kind of a bus stop bench. He said, I'll be right there. And he brought the, the purse and all the money and everything was, was there. And uh, so a few weeks later, she shows up at my office, said she wanted to talk to a pastor. And she started to tell me, this story. And I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to end well. And so anyway, she said, I just have to thank this person. And I thought of the 10 lepers and the one was here, or only one came back to say thank you. She said, I just, I just have to uh, tell this person thank you. And I'm hoping you can help me. 
And I'm like, ha, there's a few billion people in the world. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to help, but whatever. So we ended up praying and uh, asking God to just bring that person across her pathway again. And so she gets up and she thanks me for the time. And I said, uh, I, ho- I hope you feel a little better. She said, well, I was actually hoping you could tell me his name. And I'm like, I'm good, but not that good. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, because he works here. And I said, in my head, I'm thinking, why do you start with that, right? I had no idea. I thought I'm supposed to somehow pull this name out. And so anyway, we were able through some photos to identify this, this person. So tomorrow we're having a luncheon. Uh, we sent a film crew out uh, to uh, video her and her son at that park bench, and she's telling her story. So we're going to play this, and then I'm going to walk in with her. And uh, we're having a day of celebrating, a lunch celebrating a person that was caught doing a random act of kindness that was doing what? Let your good works, let your life shine so that people can see you operate under a whole different value system. You know, there would have been some people that found a pocketbook full of money and go, well, thank you, Lord, you provided. Um, But he knew in his heart the right thing is to find the owner and return it. And so tomorrow, what we're doing is championing that very concept. And so do you think that God knows, even if no one ever does recognize that? He does, right? He remembers not to forget the love that we have shown and that we have ministered to his people and that we have cared. Hebrews 6, 10 through 12. He's not going to forget what you do. And so uh, when you think about letting your light shine... Uh, we, we think of how many times Jesus talked about, you are the light of the world, right? Uh, in Luke 11, he said, and the light comes from within you. Not that we have it in and of ourselves. It's Paul that said, it's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. It's not because you're good. It's not because you uh, are able to manufacture the light. When the light moves in, the darkness moves out. That's what happens to us when we come to know the Lord. That's why 2 Corinthians 4 4 talks about the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is being shrouded or hidden. In other words, Satan blinds the eyes of those that do not see, lest they see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus. And are saved. So there's an adversary working against the light. Jesus said, hey, don't hide your light. Don't cover it up. Don't put it under a bushel basket. In other words, you're the hope of the world. Uh, Darkness can never overcome light. We know that. But light always overcomes darkness. If it's allowed to shine. Maybe you have a flashlight. I have one or two hundred of them. Um, And if they have batteries at work, you turn it on and it dispels. But if if the light is out, I can walk around with it all I want. It's not going to do any good. I can say, I have a flashlight. But unless it's on, it doesn't do what it was intended to do. And so here we are in Philippians, Paul saying... Let your light shine in the darkness. Don't turn it off. Turn it on. Let Christ in you show forth. Just out of interest, how far do you think the human eye can see? Any any guesses out there? No, No fear. I told you last night. Ten miles. Uh, Actually, the human eye can see a candle ten miles away in darkness. Ten miles away, a candle. Uh, Actually, the answer is 2.6 million miles away. The galaxy Andromeda, we can see that with our naked eyes. 
And if you look at the Milky Way, for instance, that milkiness is just a cloud of stars and their light converging that makes it look milky. That's how far we can see. I've often contended as we pray for our missionaries and as we pray for ourselves, um, as we share a little light and the light increases and they begin to focus and the darkness begins to dispel, along with that comes hope. Hope can be, be life-saving for somebody that's depressed, somebody that's angry, somebody that's lost so much. Somebody that's traveling through life thinking that power, pleasure, fame, or fortune will give them happiness and meaning. They need the light. And we're the only light there is. Jesus isn't shining light today as he did when he was on the earth. He's shining light through all of us. In fact, Jesus is called the bright and morning star. And as we uh, close in a few minutes, we'll, we'll talk about what that means to have the bright morning star within us. Now, I want to show you two, uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, an image uh, of a star, right? Shine as stars. And we're going to go around each of these points to kind of identify what does that mean then to shine. Knowing Christ and making Christ known to others. That's one of the first things that the, the shining forth will do for us. Now, I want you to watch two videos. Did any of you by any chance own a 1956 Ford? Fairlane. Not now. You did. A long time ago. Yeah, yeah it is a long time ago. Uh, I want you to watch an actual commercial for a 1956 Ford. And uh, then we're going to have you make a few observations, all right? So pay attention. Here comes the commercial from 1956. Let's leave the home of this happy breed for a moment and follow a modern American family that isn't at home. And no wonder. The weather is just right for a trip, and so is their car. A new Ford Custom Line Victoria. A new and lower-priced Victoria. It's powered by the mighty Ford V8 engine. The road is long, but miles don't matter because this is a car born for the open road. And the longer the trip, the more they realize what a comfortable, easy-handling car Ford is. This is the first stop they've made in 200 miles. Let's see how the trip's going. Afternoon, sir. Fill it up. If you will, please. Boy, that's quite a road. Uh, you got the car for it. Every Ford owner that comes in here tells you that. Huh? Hi, right, son. Start after that long drive? Nope. I like to ride in our new car. <laughs> Who doesn't? You know, I used to think you needed an expensive car for long-distance driving. We think the ride's just as comfortable in our new Ford. Well, you should. A Ford is engineered like the expensive cars. I've seen them all up in the grease rack, and believe me, in a Ford, you've got a lot of car in you. What are you doing, Jimmy? I'm watching the man check the oil, man. You wouldn't be interested. Well, that's all right, son. You'll be driving a Ford someday, too, probably. Well, young lady, how are you enjoying your trip? Fine, thank you. How do you know? You've been asleep all the way. Say, mister, what's this fighting under the hood for? Well, son, that's extra sound insulation. That's one of the reasons your sister's been sleeping so soundly. You won't find that on other low-priced cars. Well, you don't need any oil, sir. It's a real snug engine. Good. Okay, kids, climb aboard. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Don't forget your chain, sir. You'll be getting plenty of extra chain driving this baby. You know, a, car, a Ford like yours won the mobile gas economy trophy. But believe me, you win every time you pull up to a gas pump. Well, thanks. So long. So long. Have a nice trip. Thank you.
When you go in a 56 Ford, you go first in economy, first in performance, and first in safety. See your Ford dealers soon. Wow. Takes you back a bit, doesn't it? Uh, just quickly, what did you notice about that commercial? It was long, yeah. You wouldn't want to pay for that during the Super Bowl. Yeah, three plus minutes, right. Yeah, it was long. What else? People pumped the gas. <laughs> People pumped the gas. It must have been from New Jersey. They still do that, right? Uh, but yeah, the whole service, checking your oil and all that, uh, shining the windshield. Uh, yeah, those days seem to be gone. What else did you notice? Lots of talking. Lots of talking, yes. To each other. To each other, yes, that's right. Uh, lots of information, lots of facts being woven into that little story before they all got in and put on their shoulder belts, seat belts, and all that, right? Uh, what else? Got changed back. Got changed back. Yeah, so, you know, today the only way you get changed back is if you hand them a hundred, right? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, no other cars on the road. <laughs> he wore a hat, right. Yeah, uniform. It was black and white. Yeah, no color television. Yes? He was probably on the set. There was no background. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no background, yes. We were talking about Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, the padding, under that was the big upgrade, right? Um, we just uh, had to update our car, and it has adaptive cruise control, which means it paces itself. And if you go to the left or the right, it corrects you. I was just driving it for the first time last week, and I was going down the turnpike, and I said, I don't even need to hold the steering wheel. Uh, and sure enough, cruise control, somebody cuts in front of you, it adapts, moves you around, it's got front end braking, rear end braking, and I'm thinking, oh boy. So I just had my friend with me and I had my hands off the wheel and up comes on the dashboard, put your hands on the wheel. <laughs> so anyway, what a day, what a day. So um, you notice it was very white, right? Meaning, uh, it was all Caucasian. Uh, there, there wasn't anything said by the, the wife, and the little girl was kind of dismissed. You wouldn't be interested, right? So it certainly had some gender bias in there. Now, I want you to watch an updated commercial for the Ford, and then I want you to contrast it just quickly, all right? See, see what this is like. Did you turn? Did you look? What was that? Searching for what you need. Now you're finding that that more going on here than meets the eye. Why spend your life just wondering why? Life's a river round every bend. Just take a look. Come on and look again. Come on and look again. If you haven't looked it for lately, look again. <laughs> wow. Did you notice anything different? Speed of it. <laughs> yeah, the, the speed uh, of how fast the commercial was changing scenes. What else? Every gender. Every gender uh, had different races, different economic status. Uh, you could drive it to a wedding or you could drive it out in the mud in the, the country, right? Just lots of things. How about all those facts they were telling you? Imagery, and it, uh, it had all that music. There was no music in the other one, right? And so they're showing you sports stars and music stars and ordinary people and lots of colors, lots of varieties. And uh, so if you go back uh, to the, the 50s, right? 
Uh, they were driving a car, and it was for transportation. As you zip forward to today, they're driving cars for transportation. And I would just like to point out, the gospel has not changed. The need that people have has not changed. But the world in which we live has changed a lot. How we present the gospel, how we shine as stars is different today. Now, we can resist that if we want to, but we'll do it to no effect. So we're uh, in that situation like Paul was when he, he wrote to the Galatians chapter 4 and verse 12. He said, I became like you so you could become like me. To the Romans, uh, I became all things to all people so that I may win some. So there is a challenge that we have, and, and churches like Lyme Lexington, uh, we have to make sure we're actually ministering in the day in which we live, not with a different gospel, uh, not with a different purpose, but with a different methodology of delivering that message. And, you know, we're using technology and all kinds of things that back in the 50s were not available. But it also means our witness or our engagement in our communities have to be different. We have to do more than just put up signs, all lost sheep report here. They, they don't respond to that anymore. People will always respond to relational connection. In fact, remember, the gospel has two components. One, the, the life-saving, eternally saving message of the gospel. But it also is that invitation to have fellowship one with another. The world can't imitate that. And so as we follow through uh, with this shining forth, let's remember, I've got to engage the culture in which God has placed me. That's part of my stewardship as a rock star. Now, let's go back to the star for a moment. So as we move, move around clockwise here, uh, when I think of well, what is a balanced person that's shining forth? What's the goal? What's the report card? What is it that we're looking for? Uh, dental schools produce dentists. Law schools produce lawyers. What do churches produce? Shining stars. And so I think that is knowing Christ, making him known, Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Learning to seriously study the scripture. Meaning, I learn how to feed myself the word of God. And then, uh, fourthly, this idea of serving the body of Christ and the global community. You say, ah, spelling error. Uh, not actually. Global means global and local. Right? Saving a little space there. Um, and the idea being that in the global world, we send out people to share Christ. And, you know, this church is well known for its care for the community and the world. But there also is that point where I can't just serve in my church. I need to serve in my community. If I don't do that, I get to the point where I don't have anybody to share the gospel with, right? Because all the people that I invited, if I'm not enlarging that friendship, pretty soon there's no one else to invite. And after a while, they say, if you invite me one more time, I'm going to punch you a good one. Right? So if you serve in the library or the hospital or the nursing home or you help out in some way or you work in this community, let your light shine. Show forth whose you are. Who's in you that is shining out from you? Now, I want to show you one more video, uh, and it's about uh, having a big butt. Uh, so don't be offended. It's one T, not two, right? So uh, this is called a rant, by the way, in video format. So let's play the big butt. I got a, got a big butt. Gigantic, if I'm going to be blunt about it. And you know what? The funny thing is, I got several big butts. 
And, and, and before you before you discard me or, or wince at the disgusting notion of that, I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that possibly you have at least one big butt as well. Yeah, you like that? It hurts a little, huh? Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something, okay? Everybody we know has a big butt. And more often than not, it's something that actually gets in the way of us living a consistent life for Jesus. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to expound a little bit, okay? See if you can recognize some of these buttons. But I have to work more. But my favorite TV show is on. But my kids have practice. But i got to tweet something. It's such a beautiful day. But I'm just not in the mood. But I deserve a break today. You see, everything kind of interferes with my life of, of just living an authentic life for God, okay? And more often than not, it always has something to do with some sort of butt, okay? Even the littlest of butt can get distracted. It really can. The littlest butt can make me think, well, oh, I'm not going to pray today. I'm not going to think about it today. I'm not going to deny myself. I'm not going to read the Bible, blah, blah, blah. Whatever God asks me to do, I seem to have a butt for it and get away, okay? And the most horrendously big butt of all time is the butt that gets in the way of me just hanging out with God and reading His Word. It's true. Think about it. All the times you're about to open that, and all of a sudden the big giant butt gets in the way of butt. Much like one of these. But I got a farm bill, but I'm tired. But the game's over, but I read last Tuesday. But I got to check Facebook. But I don't like the books. But it's too hot in here. But I, I just don't like books. But I don't understand it. But it's boring. But what does that have to do with me in the 21st century? Those are some ugly butts, people. Let's just call them what they are. Ugly. Ugly butts. Okay? And there's a lot more to them, sad but true. Here's a list, although not exhaustive, of some of the most popular butts known to mankind. But I don't have enough money yet. But others will think that I'm a nerd if I carry the Bible. But they won't like me if I talk about Jesus. But I don't know if God will do what I ask. But I just can't get motivated. But I'm afraid. But I don't have all the answers. But the small group is the same night as Monday Night Football. But can I just let my life speak for itself when I'm not happy? That's not my gift. That's the pastor's job. But I don't know how to pray. But I can't believe that. But I don't know where to start. But everybody else is having fun. Butts. About friend, but 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 here a but there a but everywhere a but but okay and, and, and the most overused but of all time but I just don't have enough time really oh come on we have a lot of buts God has given us a real simple word okay if we learn it and we share it and we teach it and we live by it then see God gets glorified people benefit and then we get blessed that's why we do what we do that's the why behind the but okay and ultimately that's the whole point I'm trying to make here my fellow but lovers is if your but is bigger than your why. Your butt's too big. Okay, it's time to, metaphorically speaking, snap into a swim gym. Okay, let's slap on some spiritual shape ups and hit the road a little bit so we can just manage the butts a little bit. That's all we're trying to do. That's what we're talking about. Let's minimize the excuses. Let's shrink the butts. Shrink the butts. Say it with me. Shrink the butts. That's what we need to do. And you and I can do that together. We can conquer this. You and I can do it. We start the day, okay? I know we can. Let's just do it. No ifs, ands, or. Uh, some people are very clever, are they not? Yes. So when we think about this idea of a balanced Christian life, where I'm developing each point of that star that's supposed to shine, uh, think in terms of sharing life in a small group. Now, maybe that small group is a choir group or a, a Sunday school class or uh, a men's gathering or a women's gathering. But you have to have a place not to just take in like you are at a service, but to give out, to share your life. And community, again, is one of those great gifts that we have at our disposal. And when we use it, we shine. And then finally, sacrificial giving. And not just of our substance, uh, but of our time and our efforts and uh, those kind of things that help us uh, to, to really say, I'm giving my life. So we're going to have an offering in a few minutes. Let me just challenge you this way. When you give money in the offering, you know what you're doing? You're giving life. How is that? Well, I go to work. And I labor, and somebody gives me money for what I do. And so I spend the time to go to work and labor. They give me currency. That currency is the representation of the exchange of my life and energy. So when I take that same currency and I put it in an offering plate, what am I doing? I'm giving my life that I exchanged for that. That makes sense, doesn't it? And so there is a sense in which you have to ask, are all of these things properly balanced, right? Uh, 
a number of years ago, my son gave us a hot tub. And I like stargazing, so I like going out there in the hot tub. But to keep the hot tub operating just at its premium, I have a little container of test strips. And I stick those in, or I stick one in, and I hold it there for a few seconds, and I pull it out, and then I hold it up against the standard. How's the alkalinity, right? How's the chlorine level? How's the hardness of the water? And it's measuring all these things. And so if it's off, I put a little more of this in. If it's this way, I put a little more of that in. Makes sense, right? And so the water is always crystal clear, 102 degrees, and it's very enjoyable. But if it was gunky or, you know, just dirty, you'd say, I'm not getting in that, right? So you have to maintain it. Likewise, we have to maintain balance. So I've known people in the churches I've been a part of, man, they, they serve all the time, but they're hardly ever in worship. They're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. They're not giving their passion and their energy to worship God corporately with the rest of us. But they're always serving. Some people always love to worship and never serve. Some people will give five minutes, but they can't give five dollars. Well, that's still giving, but some people give nothing or virtually nothing, right? Uh, some people are so dependent on somebody teaching them the Bible because they don't know how to study it themselves. And so what happens is the chemistry of shining gets out of whack. And you miss the opportunity to shine brightly. Well, hopefully that makes good sense to you. And uh, to the church at Thyatira, uh, this is what's said in the book of Revelation. I know your deeds, your love and your faith, your service and perseverance. And that you are now doing more than you did at first. That sounds like growth, doesn't it? Hold on to what you have until I come. I will also give you that one. Speaking of a person, the morning star. We get to shine brightly now because of Christ in us. But there is a day coming when we'll all stand before him. Those of us that have been faithful, we've developed our shine, right? God is going to give us the greatest shine of all, presence of Jesus Christ himself. Well, I'm sure that God wants to use this uh, in your life, and I hope that you'll let him do that, because it's sure a dark world. We sure need somebody just like you to let it shine in a dark world. Let's pray. Gracious God, thanks for this opportunity to share. Uh, thank you for this beautiful church, uh, beautiful of people that love you and care about you. And they're in a very important time of selecting a pastor and uh, uh, charging this community um, uh, with the love of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the good plan that they have in place. And I ask that you would bless them as they uh, act upon that. And so God bless them in uh, their search, bless them in their community outreach, and bless each of us, Lord, please, as we shine as stars in the universe. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Let's stand as we sing our
Thank you, Dave, for a great message. Uh, I can really tell that God gave you a great message that we all needed to hear this morning, so thank you. Uh, last week we had a lot of announcements. This week we don't have quite as many. Uh, of, I think most of you know, but I just want to remind you that following church, uh, our church service here, uh, we are going to have a congregational meeting. It's a time for you to come and discuss um, the new uh, uh, pastor, uh, which direction the church. If you have any questions, this is a time to bring them up, and uh, hopefully we'll have some people from the leadership here to answer the questions. So that's uh, maybe like 10 minutes after we dismiss. Is that okay? And then make sure, grab some coffee, and get back in here so we can get... Is that good, Tom? Okay. And just to let you know, 10 minutes really goes fast. So, so if you... Just keep that in mind. And just for those who think we're not doing Sunday school anymore, well, next week we officially start our Sunday school time for all ages. <clears throat> we are a little later with all the uh, exciting extra things that have been going on, but next week we will be starting our Sunday school. Uh, at this time, uh, Steve, do you have an announcement about the Catalyst team? I just wanted to follow up on the announcement made last week um, um, about our Catalyst Team focus group we're holding. So what we're doing is we're looking for people from the congregation to hear our presentation, ask questions about the, the uh, plan, and also to provide feedback on how we can communicate the plan more effectively to the entire congregation. So beyond that, there's no additional commitment from you for, for um, um, participating in, in that. Uh, we'll meet over in the, in the youth barn next Sunday following Sunday school. We'll serve lunch and maybe allow one, one hour for the presentation and the uh, Q&A then. So if you would like to be a part of this, please sign up at the welcome table before you leave today. Um, and with that, the CAT team has another video to show you, which um, fittingly speaks to the need of, you know, um, us to shine like stars in our communities. Thank you, Steve, and uh, as you can tell, we have videos that uh, are, have to do with the uh, CAT team as we're developing that. Okay, uh, for our uh, <coughs> prayer time, um, got a call from Art Detweiler this morning, and uh, pretty shook 
he was pretty shooken up. Shooken up. Uh, somebody broke into their house last night, and uh, windows were broken. Art didn't say that anything was stolen. I asked him if they were physically okay, and uh, they said uh, yes. Uh, they're not, uh, Art wasn't real clear on all what happened, but we need to pray for Art and Irene as uh, it just seems like things happen and uh, they have a lot of uh, storms in life. So we want to pray for uh, Art and Irene at this time. Also, a number of you here know my Aunt Janet, uh, Janet Gain, uh, her granddaughter, her son Tim, That'd be Tim and Tina Gain. Uh, their daughter, uh, Katie, 17 years old, tragically lost her life this past week. And you talk about faces, Steve, here with that video. I was over at the service and the faces of about 400 young people that were there. Man, they need God so much. And it's, it's a... A really hard time. So we want to pray for Tim and Tina again as they are trying to make some sense out of this and uh, uh, just pray for the whole family, for the whole Gain family as uh, this has been a, a terrible tragedy of their beautiful young daughter. Uh, that is all that I have. Uh, so will you join me in prayer? God, thank you. Thank you for the words that we heard today. Help us all to be the light. And as we heard, the world is dark. There's a lot of hurting people. And we are commanded to be out there. Go into the world and preach Jesus. People are ready to listen. And we need to do our parts. We can't do it just sitting in this building. We need to be out there with the people that desperately need you. So God, I, I just, sometimes we don't know how to pray. Sometimes it's hard to pray. Sometimes we get angry when we see things that are going on in the world around us. My heart breaks for Tim and Tina again. My heart breaks for their other daughters. My heart breaks for all the friends that were there on Friday. God, sometimes it's hard to pray. But if we look in your word, if we look at the prayers of the ones in Psalms, Father, a lament is a prayer that you honor. You know the pain that we're all going through here on this earth. And your heart breaks also. So God, right now, I just lift up Tim and Tina to you. I lift up Ashley to you. I lift up Madison and her husband Joe to you. I lift up, I lift up my Aunt Janet who lost a, a granddaughter. And just somehow, and we know you can do it, that you can make sense out of this, that something good will uh, happen. You are a God of hope. You are a God of love. And we need to remember that. And we lift up Art and Irene to you, God. Um, <clears throat> thankfully, no one was hurt. But God, why did this happen? Why did somebody come, smash windows, try to get in? I just lift up Art and Irene to you right now. They, they need you. They need your comfort. They need your, your peace as they're trying to figure out what is going on. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for always being ready to lift us and to comfort us when we go through the hard times. And again, I just thank you for this time to hear your word spoken, to have worship, God. We just give this all to you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers. And God, now as we uh, 
prepare to give back uh, uh, what we have, Father, again, I just pray that each one here knows that they are letting, as we heard, letting their light shine. When we give back to the church, that they can do your work, Father. And we just thank you for each one who gives. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks, Dan. Will you rise and join me for a closing prayer? God, now as we go from here, whatever we do, whatever we say, may it be pleasing to you, God. May we take the words and the worship that we've heard and had this morning and glorify you to everyone we come into contact with. We pray this in your name. Amen. See you back in here in about 10 minutes.